look to your covenant, O Lord, and forget not the life of your poor ones forever. Arise, O God, and defend your cause, and forget not the cries of those who seek you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear friends in Christ, let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints in you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who in your mercy led St. Clair to a love of poverty, grant through her intercession that following Christ in poverty of spirit we may merit to contemplate you one day in the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord God said to me, As for you, son of man, obey me when I speak to you. Be not rebellious like this house of rebellion, but open your mouth and eat what I shall give you. It was then I saw a hand stretched out to me in which was a written scroll which he unrolled before me. It was covered with writing front and back, and written on it was lamentation and wailing and woe. He said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat this scroll, then go, speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. Son of man, he said to, then said to me, feed your belly and fill your stomach with this scroll I am giving you. I ate it and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. He said, son of man, go now to the house of Israel and speak my words to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Be to God. How sweet to my taste is your promise. How sweet, sweet to, to my, my taste, taste is, is your promise. In the way of your decrees I rejoice as much as in all riches. How sweet to, to my, my taste, taste is, is your, your promise. promise. Yes, your decrees are my delight. They are my counselors. How sweet Eat to my, my taste, taste is your, your promise. promise. The law of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. How sweet Eat to my, my taste, taste is your promise. promise. How sweet to my palate are your promises, sweeter than honey to my mouth. How sweet Eat to my, my taste, taste is, is your, your promise. promise. Your decrees are my inheritance forever, the joy of my heart they are. How sweet Eat to my, my taste, taste is your promise. promise. I gasp with open mouth in my yearning for your commands. How, How sweet, sweet to my taste, taste is your promise. promise.
Lord be with you. And with your Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called the child over, placed it in their midst, and said, Amen. I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of God of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that their angels in heaven always look upon the face of my heavenly Father. What is your opinion if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray? Will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go in search of the stray? And if he finds it, amen, I say to you, he rejoices more over it than over the ninety-nine that did not stray. Just the same, in just the same way, it is not the will of your heavenly Father that one of these little ones be lost. Gospel of the Lord. Jesus um, frequently gave answers that didn't make too much sense to the people of his day because they, they had other ideas about things. For example, uh, using the child as um, a particular example for adults, but not part of their culture, that the people wouldn't understand that at all because children were more or less treated like property in that culture. But what Jesus is really meaning is it's um, something we can learn from uh, if we look at a child, the innocence and uh, simplicity and so forth. It's interesting that when the Blessed Mother has appeared to different people in, in the approved apparitions, uh, they're, usually they're, they're children or they're, they're very young people. Bernadette was 14 at, at Lourdes. Fatima Sears were basically grade school aged. And there are other examples to, to that effect. Uh, St. Bernadette, uh, when she was asked how she felt about being the seer, she said, well, if the Lord had found anybody more ignorant or poorer, uh, then um, uh, the Blessed Virgin said she would have appeared to that person. So uh, the thing about a child or being childlike is not, not being um, fooled by a false sense of, of importance or an in, 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 in inflated concept of oneself. And um, in that respect, I mean, children can teach adults things. Now, mind you, being childlike is not the same thing as being childish. It's a different thing, and that's precisely what people have to avoid. People must mature in the faith and mature in their character. So the, the idea of growing in age, grace, and wisdom is important. As, as people grow older, they should be wiser, and they should really grow in virtue. Uh, the old saying, there's, there's no fool like an old fool. So it's very important that people grow not only in age, but in grace and in wisdom and become holier over time. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Um, it can happen. And it, you know, certainly uh, people can mature in, according to the, to the means of grace, but it's something that we have to be aware of because our culture does not really encourage people in that direction. Uh, youth are idolized, uh, which is not necessarily bad, but they're not known for their wisdom. But the culture that we live in does not appreciate wisdom at all. It's, it appreciates more superficial characteristics of people. So we have to be careful and be innocent, be holy, be simple in the best sense of the term. Uh, not uh, simple-minded, certainly, but be, be clear, not, not to be duplicitous. So when St. Bernadette was asked questions about having seen the Blessed Mother, she was very clear. She never changed her story. 
she didn't try to elaborate on things that didn't happen or you know uh, exaggerate anything she was very simple and uh, that's a sign of being childlike so we asked the Lord to help to give us that now the feast today is, is the feast of St. Clair St. Clair is kind of a spiritual sister of St. Francis and um, she uh, her legacy lives on in the many convents uh, throughout the world well, we have a couple of poor Clare convents in our diocese um, the order itself is contemplative which means that the, the nuns basically spend their time praying before the Blessed Sacrament but they support themselves I mean for example the hosts that we have at Mass we we get we get repurchased from the poor Clare monastery um, that's that's one of the dealers anyway we, we've used another one but the, the they're, they've been traditionally a, a dealer of you know, hosts for the Eucharist to support their convent. And um, some people might wonder, well, what, what good do they do? Well, prayer is very important. And we have to have people who pray. Now, not, you know, t most people are not able to spend all day in front of the Blessed Sacrament because you know, we're not religious in that sense, but there's an aspect or a, a, there's a segment of the church that, that does in fact do that. And it, it doesn't mean that we, don't have, that we don't have to pray at all. It just means that uh, con contemplation and action are both very valid and important and they both go together. So we work, we live for the Lord, we do what we need to do, and we also spend time in prayer. And if we spend time in prayer, then we'll grow will we'll grow in, in the, the different virtues. One of the things is simplicity, heart, innocence, and so forth. So we can use the saints as good um, examples for us uh, that um, we don't always, we don't have to imitate their actions, but they're really their attitudes, and they can teach us many things. You might say that, you know, as, as I've said before, it's, it's not simply a matter of, of reading something, although reading is important enough, but sometimes people, won't, people get more out of looking at others and trying to emulate them. And as the old thing, saying goes, that some, sometimes the only Bible somebody will read is what they see in us. So we ask the Lord to help us be the people we're supposed to be. And that we can use the saints to help us to model ourselves after them because they're little replicas of Christ. Beloved brothers and sisters, we turn to our Father who hears our prayers. Please use the response, Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, we pray for the church everywhere, especially where she is oppressed, uh, or underground, or persecuted, particularly in China and in other areas of the world. Uh, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for um, uh, public order and uh, for a cessation of violence in our cities and um, also uh, for the protection of Catholic churches and statuary from vandals and people with agendas that are very, very much opposed to what we stand for. We pray to the Lord, Lord. We pray for the needy, for all affected by the pandemic in, in, in an adverse way, and that for protection of our health and our spiritual welfare, we pray to the Lord. And for Lisa Sandoval, for whom the Mass tonight is offered, we pray to the Lord. And Heavenly Father, thank you for calling us to be at the altar this evening as we conclude this day, which is a gift that you give to us. We are grateful for each day that uh, we are allowed to live. Help us to make the most of each day by building up the kingdom, and at least in our corner of the world, the kingdom that Jesus came to found, to work out our salvation and to assist many others accordingly through our example, our prayers, in our words. We pray these things through your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away in this banking bundle of the Lord Jesus Christ, and shall I receive it. God, Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but say the word and my soul shall be healed. that I will give, says the Lord, is my flesh for the life of the world. Thank 
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. God, rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>